Mwanza Juda Temba, I'm the senior pastor of Global Apostle Missions. Whose headquarters is based in Mombasa, East Africa, Kenya. I'll be sharing with you the word of the Lord on being resilient and consistent. Before then, let us pray. Eternal King of Glory, in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, I pray for my viewers globally. Lord, those that are uh, watching us through the KTN channel, those that are Lord streaming live, Lord, as many that are using various platforms to be able to access this program, pray for them right now in the name of Jesus. As I pray that you'll be able to speak to each and every one of them, you will specifically strengthen them, Lord, even during this season that, Lord, the world is facing this uh, current pandemic. You bring healing and deliverance to each and every one of them. You speak hope to the hopeless. You, Lord God Almighty, you'll be able to speak grace and strength to those that are seemingly despairing. I bless you and I honor you. In Jesus' name, we pray it. Amen and amen. Um, welcome on board. I am sharing with you the word of the Lord this morning on a subject that I've entitled Resilient and Consistent. Being resilient and consistent. I want to encourage you. I want to speak to my nation. I want to speak to the nation of Kenya. I want to speak to the nations of the world and to encourage them. Say this is not the end. It's not the end. All we need to do is to anchor our faith in God and know that God is not done with us and that through it all, God will be able to make a way for us. I sing a song, a song and say through it all, through it all I have known to trust in Jesus. I am known to depend upon the Lord. And uh, uh, one great singer called Ron Kennelly sang a song and said, if you catch hell, don't hold it. And if you're going through hell, don't stop. He said, go ahead, go ahead, go ahead, go ahead. There's a time for close to three years, his son went wayward, left home, and just rebelled. And after much intercession, um, him and his wife having interceded and st standing in the gap, God restored the son and brought the son back home. That's why if you have listened to his songs, there's one of his songs that he has sung uh, called Welcome Home. He was singing that song in honor of his son, welcoming him back home. I want to encourage you this morning and tell you that God is not God has not left us. God has not forsaken us. God is not, our case is not over. God is with us. God spoke to Joshua and told him that um, I will never leave you in the book of Joshua chapter 1. He said, as I was with my servant Moses, I will be with you. Then he went ahead and told him every way, every place that the sole of your feet will step, I will give you. Let's read a scripture that is our anchor scripture for this subject. I am speaking on re resilient and consistent. Isaiah chapter 40 verse 28 uh, to 31. Isaiah chapter 40, verse 28 to 31. It says, Hast thou not known, hast thou not heard, that the everlasting God, the Lord, the creator of the ends of the earth, fainteth not, neither is weary. There is no searching of his understanding. He giveth power to the faint, and to them that have no might, he increaseth strength. Even the youths shall faint and be weary, and the young men shall utterly fall. But they that wait upon the Lord shall renew their strength. They shall mount up with wings as eagles. They shall run and not be weary, and they shall walk and not faint. Isaiah speaking in the book of Isaiah chapter 40, beginning from verse 28, he asked a fundamental question. He said, have you not known? Meaning, we need to know, or we ought to know. What we ought to know? And not only do we need to know, he asked a question, he said, have you not known? And have you not heard? Number one, we need to know that our God is everlasting. And is, if our God is everlasting, he being the creator of the ends of the earth, number one, he never faints. Remember what the Bible says in the book of Psalms 121? It says, He that keeps Israel neither sleeps nor slumbers. Our God never faints. That's why Isaiah began by asking, Have you not known? Then he went ahead and asked, Have you not heard? Say that the everlasting God, the Lord, the creator of the ends of the earth, he fainteth not. Our God does not faint. Yes, in life and destiny, at some point we faint, we falter, and we fail him. But our God is constant. Our God does not uh, faint in any way. Our God is immortal. And he encourages us 
encourages us in 1 Corinthians chapter 15 and verse 58. Paul speaking, he said, be steadfast, be immovable, always abounding in the work of the Lord, knowing that your labor in the Lord is not in vain. Therefore, Isaiah went down and said, our God fainteth not. When I heard and said, neither is weary. Despite the workings of God, universally, he is never weary. Imagine God stretching the heavens alone and he never, got, he never gets worried. The scripture says he does not faint. He never gets worried. I am here to encourage you this morning. Maybe I'm speaking to you. You're lying on your bed and you feel like you're worried and you feel like you're fainting because you have done all that is within your ability and your power and things are not working as per your expectation. I am here to encourage you that the God that does not faint, neither get worried, is on your side and he will enable you to be able to get out and come out of that state. He says... Uh, there is no searching of his understanding. As we keep on loving him, as we keep on exposing ourselves to his knowledge, there is no searching of his understanding. What we need to do is just to keep on loving him, to keep on loving him. And any time we stay close to him, we need to know that we will not faint, we will not get weary. That's why the scripture goes down and says, he giveth power to the faint. Our God giveth power to the faint. And he says, and to them that have no might, he increases strength. I speak over you on the premise of this word right now, that in that fainting state of your life, God is giving you power in the name of Jesus Christ. And I speak to you right now on the premise of this word, that God is increasing your strength. In the name of Jesus, the scripture says, he increases strength to them that have no might in that state of lack of might in your life and destiny. I decree and declare over your life right now that God is increasing your strength. He is giving you power. He is giving you ability to be able to carry on. He is giving you power. He is giving you ability to be able to move forward. In the name of Jesus, the scripture goes down in the book of Isaiah where we read and says, even the youths shall faint and be weary. You know, youths are known for strength and vitality. And the scripture, the scripture goes ahead and says, even the youths shall faint and and be wary. It says, the young man shall utterly fall. It is not the norm of the youths to faint. It is not the norm of the young men to utterly fail. The youths are known to be men or people of strength. But when it gets to a point whereby they are fainting and they are falling, then we know that there is a, there is a problem. There is an anomaly. He said, but they that wait upon the Lord shall renew their strength. I, am, I have good news for you this morning that as you wait upon the Lord, what you might need just to do is to use the key of waiting upon the Lord. The scripture goes ahead and says, but they that wait upon the Lord, they shall renew their strength. I am here to encourage you this morning that as you wait upon the Lord, your strength shall be renewed. You might be saying, man of God, I have waited on the Lord. I have fasted for 21 days. I have fasted for 40 days. I have done all that is within my power. I am here to encourage you and to tell you that it doesn't matter how long you have waited upon the Lord. And I join my faith with you and I address any principality. The Bible says in the book of Daniel that on the first day that Daniel began to pray, his prayers were heard, but the prince of Pasha resisted him. I join my faith with you and I address that principality in your territory right now that has been resisting you and hindering your breakthrough in the name of Jesus. And I involve the, uh, the, 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 the involvement uh, of superior angels right now as I command them to take charge over your issue. And I command the heavens above you to be opened in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. The scripture says, even the youths shall faint and be weary and the young men shall utterly fall. But I have good news for you. But they that wait upon the Lord shall renew their strength. As many that wait upon the Lord, they shall renew their strength. I release the grace upon you of new strength in the name of Jesus Christ. I release fresh strength and I release fresh grace upon you this morning. In the name of Jesus Christ, I release grace to carry on upon your life and destiny upon you right now. In the name of Jesus Christ, you're finding a, a reason to carry on in the name of Jesus Christ, says they shall mount up with wings as eagles. They that wait upon the Lord, they shall renew their strength. You know, an ego has a season whereby it has to separate itself. And when it separates itself, it goes away for close to six months. What does it go to do? It goes to peel off all the old, old feathers. And when it peels off all the old feathers, it will stay in that secluded place until new feathers are grown. That's when now the, the ego will reappear. That's why the scripture tells us that they shall renew their strength 
and they shall mount up with wings as eagles. He says, they shall run and not be weary. Why? Because their strength has been renewed. They have, they have received eagles' wings. They have received uh, spiritual uh, wings. I pray for you this morning. In the name of Jesus Christ, as I release spiritual wings, in the name of Jesus Christ, I release upon you eagle's wings as per the word of the Lord. In the name of Jesus Christ, receive the wings of an eagle. Receive uh, uh, spiritual wings right now. In the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, the scripture says, they shall run. Men that looked worried, men that looked tired. Martin Luther King once said, yeah, it's, uh, if it calls for walking, walk. He said, if, if it calls for crawling, crawl. He said, if it calls for running, run. And he said, by all means, make sure that you're moving. I am here to encourage you this morning that if it will call for you walking, walk. If it will if it'll call for you crawling, crawl. If it will call for you running, run. And by all means, make sure that you're moving. The grace of God is available, and I stand as a messenger of God. And I release the grace of God upon your life to move forward. In the name of Jesus Christ, there is an awakening in your spirit. There is an awakening in your soul. You're saying, man of God, I've been struggling in my prayer life. I pray for you right now. In the name of Jesus Christ, as I decree right now, a supernatural shift in your prayer life, that hold of heaviness upon your shoulders, upon your neck, it is broken. In the name of Jesus Christ, and from today, your prayer life changes. You begin to pray like never before. In the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, the scripture says, and they shall run and not be weary. Now many a times when you run, at some point you feel you are weary. The scripture says there's a grace that God releases upon them that wait upon him. That they shall run and not be weary. The scripture says, and they shall walk and not faint. I decree right now, the promises of God, which are yes and amen in your life. I decree that as you run, as you walk in this journey of faith, you will not faint, you will not be weary. In the name of Jesus Christ. Maybe you're asking, man of God. What do you mean by the word resilient or resilience? Re uh, resilience is the capacity to recover quickly from difficulties or toughness. Resilience, it is the capacity to recover quickly from difficulties or toughness. Resilience makes you, you develop a thick skin. God's servant, Archbishop Benson Idahosa, at one point he was tired of the criticism that was receiving from men. Men had criticized him, called him names. And he went before the Lord and told him, Lord, I'm tired. And you know what the Lord told him? The Lord told him, develop a thick skin and deaf ears. Because as long as you make it, men will criticize you. They'll castigate you. They'll call you names. The same way, even when you're failing, men will criticize you. When you make it, they'll still criticize you and castigate you. So what do you need to do? Mind your own business. Be focused on the assignment that I've given you. Therefore, resilience is the capacity to recover quickly from difficulties or toughness. Resilience is also the ability of a substance or object to spring back into shape, if you like, elasticity. Resilience, it is the ability of a substance or object to spring back into shape, if you like, elasticity. A rubber band has, you know, a, a strong ability to be stretched. The, its elasticity can last. That's why it's called a rubber band. If you pull a, a rubber band, it will allow you to pull it to a certain length. And that is what God is calling us uh, is calling us into. God is calling us into an elastic dimension. He's calling us to believe him, to help us to stretch us. Because when God stretches us, he does not break us. Anytime the porter takes us to his, uh, to his, uh, to his garage, if you like it, anytime he takes us to his garage, he... He refines us and makes us to be vessels that will be envied and admired. It is my prayer that you will submit yourself to the potter and allow him to be able to fashion you according to his liking in the name of Jesus. Proverbs chapter 24 and verse 10. Proverbs chapter 24 and verse 10. The scripture says, if you faint in the days of adversity, your strength is small. Proverbs 24 verse 10. If you faint in the days of adversity, then it means that your strength is small. And how do you amass spiritual strength? Mostly, you amass spiritual strength through the word of God. Give yourself to the study of the word of God. Acts chapter 4 verse 6 says, we will give ourselves to prayer. Uh, sorry, Acts 6 4. Uh, it says, we will give ourselves to prayer and to the word of God. Anytime you give yourself to the word of God, 
into prayer. Your spiritual muscles are built. I am here to encourage you this morning, according to the word of the Lord, in the book of Isaiah, chapter 3 and verse 10, which says, Say ye to the righteous, it shall be well with them, because they will eat the fruit of their labor. I speak to your life this morning, even as I share the word of the Lord, that it shall be well with you. God is turning around your situation. He's turning around your condition in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. Um, resilient is also the ability to endure. Resilience. It is also the ability to endure. Resilience. It is the ability to endure. Romans chapter 5, verse 3 to 5. It is one of my favorite scriptures. Romans chapter 5, verse 3 to 5. It says, and not only so, but we glory in tribulations also, knowing that tribulation worketh patience, and patience experience, and experience hope, and hope maketh not ashamed, because the love of God is shed abroad in our hearts by the Holy Ghost which is given to you. The scripture encourages us to, uh, to glory in tribulations, because tribulations produce perseverance, and perseverance character, and character hope. Then the scripture goes down and tells us, hope does not disappoint because the love of God has been shed abroad in our hearts by the Holy Spirit. What is consistency? What is the art of being consistent? The way in which a substance holds together. Consistency is the ability to hold together. Consistency is the way in which a substance holds together thickness or viscosity. Consistency is also the ability to continue. John the, Baptist, uh, uh, John the Baptist was supposed to be an example of resilience on consistency, but he failed. John the Baptist was not supposed to die the death that he died. The scripture speaking in Luke chapter 7, verse 19, and also Matthew 11, verse 3, it, it echoes the same thing. It says, John the Baptist sent his disciples to ask Jesus a question, and they asked him, are you the Christ, or do we look for another one? John the Baptist came in the spirit of Elijah, yet he died a death that was not deserving. He got to a place that he got offended in Jesus, and he sent his disciples to ask him if he was the Christ or they should look for another one. What a funny and awkward question that did not deserve to come from the mouth of John the Baptist. Matthew chapter 11, verse 6, And blessed is he, whosoever shall not be offended in me. That is Jesus answering back to uh, John the Baptist. Uh, as a matter of truth, before that, he told them, Go and tell John that the works that I do, they testify. John was already in prison and he was offended. Maybe in his heart he felt like in this imprisonment, Christ needed to, to, to have come and brought me out. Many a times, I might be speaking to you this morning, you are on a sick bed and you are blaming everybody that is around you. I came to encourage you and to admonish you to stop those blame games, is to, to stop those blame games and to let go any man or any woman that has offended you in order for God to open up your heavens and bless you. Matthew chapter 14 and verse 11. His head was brought in on a platter and given to the girl who carried it on, uh, to her mother. The head of John the Baptist was carried. It was brought in on a platter. John the Baptist deserved a honorable death and not a death that his head was chopped off. Remember this man carried the death of the, the the spirit of Elijah. Therefore, he could have just said, he could have told that man that came to chop off his head, you're not chopping off my head because my time is not yet. Yet because of offenses, John the Baptist lost his life and his ministry before his time. Look at Moses, a great general. God had to take him to the mountain and kill him. And only God knows where the grave of Moses is. Look at Aaron. God had to take Aaron to the mountains and remove him the, the priestly garments and allow him to die there. It's not right. John came in the spirit and power of Elijah, yet he died like a chicken. I want you to refuse some things. There are things as you live on earth, you must tell God, I am not going to allow these things to come to pass in my life and destiny. We have the power by the words of our mouth in prayer to permit or uh, to resist some things. Matthew chapter 16 verse 18 and 19 says, You are Peter, and upon this rock I will build my church, and I will give you the keys of the kingdom of heaven. Whatever you will bind on earth shall be bound in heaven. And whatever you will lose on earth shall be loosed in heaven. God has given us power. 
He has given us authority. Let us bind what we don't want to see. And let us lose or release what we want to see. Let us release peace. Let us release glory. Let us release open heavens in our nation, in our society, in our families. At the same time, let us bind the iniquity. Let us bind what is evil. Let us bind what is not right and tell it you don't have legality. You don't have allowance to work on earth here. An altar is a legal ground either for God or the devil to work on. Let us not allow evil altars to exist in our generation. Let us not allow the workings of evil altars to function in our generation. Rather, let us resist them with all that is within our power. 1 Kings chapter 19 and verse 10. 1 Kings chapter 19 and verse 10 I read. And he said, I have been very jealous for the Lord God of hosts. For the children of Israel have forsaken thy covenant, thrown down thine altars, and slain thy prophets with a sword, and I, even I only, am left, and they seek my life to take it away. Elijah stood before the Lord and told the Lord, I have been very jealous for the Lord God of hosts. Say, the children of Israel have forsaken thy covenant. They have thrown down thine altars. They have slain thy prophets with a sword, and on the back of the mind of Elijah, because he was being pursued by that uh, wicked woman, Jezebel, he knew very well that he was next on, on line. He said, they have uh, slain thy prophets with the sword, and I even, I am the only one that is left, and they seek uh, after my life. And I love the answer that the Lord answered him. The Lord gave him an answer and told him, nay, you are not the only prophet that is remaining. I have reserved for myself 7,000 men that have not bowed their knees to Baal, nor kissed his image. First Kings 19, verse 9. They went into a cave and spent the night, and the word of the Lord came to him, what are you doing here? Elijah, many of us are misplaced. And I'm here to decree and declare upon your life that that state of being misplaced is over. That era of being misplaced is over. I came to call you out of that cave. I came to call you out of that dungeon. I came to call you out of that pit right now in the name of Jesus Christ. And I came by the grace of God to be used of God to order your life in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. The word of the Lord came to Elijah. And the Lord asked him, what are you doing here, Elijah? Why? Because Elijah was in the wrong place. It's high time. You need to make up your mind not to be found in the wrong place. You can never wear out a resilient and consistent man. You can never, at any given time, you can never wear out a resilient and consistent man. No flood or storm can wear him out. You can never. No matter what you do. The scripture says in the book of Isaiah, chapter 59 and uh, verse 19. It says, so shall they fear the name of the Lord from the west. And from the rising of the sun to the going down of the same. It says, when the enemy shall come in like a flood, the spirit of the Lord shall lift up a standard against him. I decree and declare, in your life and destiny, the spirit of the Lord is lifting up a standard against that flood. The scripture says in the book of Revelation that the, the, the serpent spewed water out of his mouth to wipe away the generation of Mary. And the scripture says that the earth opened up and swallowed the waters. I decree and declare right now that the earth is opening up and swallowing the waters that the, uh, the enemy had spewed out of his mouth. I decree and declare right now that the spirit of the Lord is lifting up a standard against every while of the enemy in your life and destiny. Ezekiel chapter 3 and verse 9. Ezekiel chapter 3 verse 9. I will make your forehead like the hardest stone, harder than flint. Do not be afraid of them or terrified by them, though they are a rebellious people. Ezekiel chapter 3 verse 9. I will make your forehead like the hardest stone, harder than flint. Do not be afraid of them or terrified by them, though they are a rebellious people. God speaking to Ezekiel, he told him he will make his forehead as harder than the hardest stone. Jeremiah chapter 1, verse 18 and 19. Today, I have made you a fortified city, an iron pillar and a bronze wall to stand against the whole land, against the kings of Judah, its officials, uh, its priests, and the people of the land. They will fight against you, but will not overcome you, for I am with you and I will rescue you, declares the Lord. I decree the word of the Lord upon your life right now. In the name of Jesus Christ, I decree that in that tough situation of your life, the Lord is making your forehead uh, like the hardest stone. In the name of Jesus Christ, 
I decree that the Lord has made you a defense city. I decree and declare this morning that the Lord has built a wall of fire round about you. I decree and declare this morning that the Lord is the glory in your midst. I decree and declare that for your shame, the Lord is giving you double. In the name of Jesus Christ, I decree and declare that the Lord is changing your story. In the name of Jesus, I decree and declare the blessings of peace. I decree and declare the blessings of prosperity. I decree and declare the blessings of breakthroughs in your life and destiny. Right now, I decree and declare a supernatural shift in your life and destiny. I decree and declare that the Lord is doing a new thing in your life and destiny. The Lord is turning your life around right now. That situation that stagnated your life, the Lord is dealing with it right now. The Lord is breaking that seed mount. In the name of Jesus Christ, the Lord is breaking that embargo. The Lord is releasing you right now from the hold of the, the wicked one. That says the Lord, even the captives of the mighty shall be set free. In the name of Jesus Christ, I decree according to the Lord, the Lord that the Lord is contending with that force that has been contending with your life. He is saving your children. In the name of Jesus Christ, he is settling and establishing you. And I decree and declare this morning that you are blessed and no man can curse you. In Jesus' name, we are prayed. Amen and amen. I'd like to give you an opportunity to accept Jesus as your Lord and Savior. Say this after me if you're not born again. Say, Father, in the name of Jesus, I come before you. I acknowledge that I am a sinner. I ask you to, to forgive my sins and erase my names from the book of death. From today, I am born again. I am a new creature. The old is gone in the name of Jesus. Thank you for accepting Jesus as your Lord and Savior. There's a contact on your screen. Please get in touch with us. We'll be able to guide you and help you on how you can be able to grow in the Lord. The Lord bless you. I declare the blessings of God upon your life this morning and this entire day. I decree this shall be a fruitful day to you. This shall be a day of peace to you. This shall be a day of breakthroughs to you. I decree that as you step out of your house this morning, and, and, and maybe you're driving to work, I pray for you right now in the name of Jesus Christ, and I decree and declare that your going out is blessed and your coming back is blessed. I decree open heavens, open doors, and open gates upon your life today. And I decree that the Lord will cause his light to shine upon you as I decree that you are blessed in Jesus' precious name. Shalom.